this is the one that people seem to like. Or maybe I'll read, read two, just because I'm into it now. Uh, this is the one that people seem to like the most, and I know it's uh, been anthologized, which probably explains how it got on the internet somehow. This is called I'm the Pony in the Central Park Zoo. I am the pony in the Central Park Zoo, resting, and I am not thinking or dreaming. I am resting. I am your first grade gold star gummed at the top of a wide ruled piece of paper filled to the edges with names. Who am I? There, that dog across the street lifting up his left hind leg. I am the America of 500 years ago. I am a naked man hunting rabbits in the wilderness. There goes a rabbit. What a beautiful white tail he has. I am the vacation of cool blue lakes. I am the word beautiful when it is applied to everything. And I'll read this one, which is the last one in this short book. Um, it's called 40 Years Ago. It was actually written 50 years ago. Never mind. 40 years ago, when my house is raked and they search through all the rooms, they find a bedroom covered with moss. They find that my furniture is hideous and that I have no taste, but they can't find me. Forty years ago, my peace was named and all of my errors proscribed. And forty years ago, the sun was just as bright as the sun seems now. And in the attic, they find a road map completely unmarked. They find several campsites, several bikes, but they can't find me. Foolish traffic, ambulance, haste, the war continues in a different place, but the armies have become invisible. Forty years ago, my well was poisoned, and my wisdom once more was postponed. And forty years ago, the sun was just as bright as the sun seems now. Inside my life, they find a weapon, and in my lungs, a tree. And in my heart, they discover a mirror but they can't find me. So, um, so many poems over so many years, but I thought I'd um, skip ahead a little bit because I've become, um, over the years, very much interested in, uh, of course, in found poetry. There's a number of found poems in my second book called Luck. And then I began exploring um, what I would call, what I call stolen rhymes. Taking rhyme schemes from other poets and then writing the poems to those rhymes, rhymes schemes. I suspect that they, I, I got the idea unconsciously from um, a number of instances of that in, in, uh, in, in literature. Uh, but certainly I had heard about the literati poets, painters, ancient China, who influenced a similar school in uh, Japan, who took um, famous songs, folk songs, and wrote new poems to them, um, keeping the scanning and keeping the rhyme. Um, so it would be equivalent to what sometimes kids used to do, like they take my country, tis of the uh, blah, 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 and make up new words to it using the same rhyme. Or, on a higher level, the Psalms of David, I was surprised to find out, seem to, by textual evidence, have written, been written to known music of the time. So the, the, the poems were written for the music that had already existed. And in the Hebrew, apparently, you will see notations to that effect after most of the Psalms, and written to the music of something. So I would just just read a few of these to give you a, a, a sort of tease about these. Of course, the way I do them is a little strange, but you'll see. Um, the first ones I tackled were um, Shakespeare's sonnets. So I'll read you well, I'll read you the Shakespearean sonnet, and then how I transformed it by taking the lines, not the scanning. That's that's another another area that I'm still investigating, but just the wrong 
lines themselves. So the, this is the Shakespearean son of the fifth one in the, the usual uh, lineup. Those hours that with gentle work did frame the lovely gaze where every eye doth dwell will play the tyrants to the very same, and that unfair which foully doth excel. For never resting time made summer on to a hideous winter and confounds him there. Sap checked with frost and musty leaves quite gone. Beauty or snow and bareness everywhere. There were not summer's desolation left, a liquid prisoner pent in walls of glass. Beauty's effect with beauty were, were bereft, nor it nor remembrance what it was, but flowers distilled the they with winter meat, least but their show, their substance still lives sweet. And my uh, poem, inspired by the rhyming scheme, goes like this. All things important outside the frame are not. You see we all dwell in a movie that is not the same and cannot, will not ever excel. Whatever it is the camera's on, we are never here but always there where the flux has finally gone, inside the fear and tenor where smoke and dust and trust are left of your world of broken glass. Even the photography is bereft of what for a moment really was. The temperature where we will meet that judgment that is all too sweet. This is like as a pointing effect of Shakespeare without being Shakespeare. I'll read another one uh, without reading you the Shakespeare source. Too much humanity, too much light, all gone in the blink of an eye, to hide behind the disguise of sight, to shield us from so much majesty. I thought the mountain merely a hill, and saw that I would age, but I am now much younger still, in the middle of this pilgrimage. Too much laughter in the car, and too many nightmares in the day, is why we are the way we are, and cannot be another way. At supper time, in love, or at noon, when we turn from our gruesome sun. And that last line is very cool. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, another example of what I've been doing is after I ran out of my favorite poems at Palgrave's anthology, and I'm still reworking them, reworking them, I thought, well, who's my, my really most favorite poet? is Emily Dickinson. And she has these really odd lines and odd uh, line endings. So why don't I try that work with her works? So as you know, you get this big, thick book that has every single one of her poems. <laughs> so in fact, I know for good reason, there are 1,774 poems in the collected poems of Emily Dickinson. And I have written, stolen, written poems based on the stolen lines of each one of them. Still apology. Still apology. So um, I'll read you one example of her poem, her poem, and then my taking her end rhymes. This is poem number 511. If you were coming in the fall, I'd brush the summer by with half a smile and half a spurn as housewives do a fly. If I could see in a year, I'd wind the months in balls and put them each in separate drawers until their time befalls. If only centuries delay, I'd kept them on my hand, subtracted till my fingers dropped into Vendimian's land. If certain when this life was out that yours and mine should be, I'd toss it yonder like a rhyme and taste eternity. But now, all ignorant of the length of time's uncertain wing, it goes me like the goblin bee that will not state its sing, sting. So a kind of minimalist version of this, using her end words, and her great, great, wonderful book lines, is uh, a poem I call The Fall. The further I fall, the more I'm by, that I spurn as I fly. The vaulted year and balls or drawers is a fuse that delayed by words at hand is dropped upon the land. Figuring it out and what I'll be is a rind of my eternity, where neither length nor between under the bed, uh, sorry, where neither length nor between, for
many white fingers, her hair, her lips, her oven, all mean, all fair. I will not escape through doors or by going abroad for pregnant hours. The tests I've borne of both rose and more are paradise. These clever moments poked along our feet, our song, and I am naked again outside your tongue. So, seven, 1774. 